every, I, no matter how hard I try, I can never seem to line this shot up, like to get everything perfectly lined up. That's all right. Hey, what's up guys, MKBHD here. So it's the end of 2019, which was a pretty great year. A lot of exciting stuff happened, but I am pretty pumped for 2020. The start of the new decade, yes, it's a new decade. I'm sticking with that. And all the stuff that comes with it and uh, just following up on already great year. So rewinding just a little bit, just to recap, you might remember at the beginning of this past year, I said that the goal for this channel was to make 100 high quality tech videos. We got a 99 the year before, would have been nice to cap triple digits. This video for this calendar year is number 110. And I'm actually really proud of that. I don't think we were rushing any or we we're over cranking out videos when we didn't need to. Inside of that, we had full length retro tech episodes. We had interviews with Bill Gates and Will Smith and Satya Nadella. We had the smartphone awards. We had the blind smartphone camera test. We had re-uploading a video a thousand times to see what it would look like. A whole bunch of interesting stuff in there. So 110 videos this year, I think that's a good pace to keep. But on top of that, we also started the Waveform podcast that is already one of the top of all tech podcasts on earth, according to Apple Podcasts. So shameless plug, but I'll link that below and I'm really proud of that. And I think, well, I know that the podcast is gonna be even bigger and better because of our plans for 2020. So the Waveform podcast and the channel are now like that. And in case anyone was curious, in the Ultimate Frisbee world, Pride of New York had a pretty good season. We won pro championships this summer and we made it to the semifinals of nationals. And the pro team, New York Empire, went 15 and 0, making it to the final four, then beating Indianapolis in the semis and beating Dallas in the finals to cap off an undefeated season and to win New York's first AUDL championship. So on to the next decade, of course, there's a bunch of tech to look forward to. I'm gonna start off right off the bat with foldables. This is going to be the year for foldables to better define themselves as a category. You know, right now every foldable that comes out sort of gets, they all get compared to each other even though they're not quite the same thing. Sort of the same way every new electric car that comes out gets compared to Tesla just because we have a default right now. But 2020 is exciting. We already have that Motorola Razr that we've already seen coming out in early 2020, assuming nothing goes wrong. That's your vertical folding clamshell design that's super reminiscent of the Razr we had in years past. And now we also have these rumors and renders of a clamshell Samsung Galaxy Fold. And this sort of feels like it would be a direct competitor to the Razer, but Samsung would also be doing it their own way, potentially with different materials, different high-end specs and cameras, and potentially at a very different price. And then there could also be a new Huawei Mate X. There could also be a new <laughs> Escobar folding phone. But the, the point I'm making is price competition is gonna be real now in folding phones. We get past the first gen where everyone's sort of figuring it out and now we actually have price competition to say you know do you want to buy a two thousand dollar folding phone or an eight hundred fifty dollar folding phone or a three thousand dollar folding phone so that'll be interesting to see and then something that i just want to see everyone take part of is high refresh rate all the things see this was already a theme of 2019 i do recall some people having their feathers ruffled by the one plus seven pro winning the mvp of my smartphone awards spoiler alert but there really was a divide this year between high refresh rate in smartphones and those that stuck at 60 hertz for at least one more year last year. So 2020 is the year I'm hoping Samsung flagships, Motorola flagships, Apple flagships, I hope everyone's best smartphone this year has at least a 90 hertz display. We're expecting some to be 120, but high refresh rate, all the things. And then we'll also see that sort of trickle down in price too. We're getting mid-range phones that have 90 hertz screens. So then, that leads me to Pixel 4a, not Pixel 5. I'm sure that'll still be a really interesting phone in 2020 also, but Pixel 4a is the one that I and a lot of people are looking forward to. So Pixel 3a came out at Google I.O., so that's May or June. So that's around when we'll expect to see the follow-up this year. And we're already seeing renders of it based on speculation and leaks. And basically the exciting thing is Google actually has some real proof of what people want in smartphones and they can see that in their sales numbers. So Pixel 4a can be that mid-range slash budget slayer with an excellent camera, no frills, you know, the Google software experience and software updates, a headphone jack, and maybe a trick or two up its sleeve. So with as competitive as mid-range and, and budget phones have gotten in the past couple of years, Google having a leg in there would be really nice. But that's a nice segue to Galaxy S 11, which I'm super ready for it. And I think it wouldn't be a stretch to right now call that an early front runner for 
best phone of next year, or at least most hyped phone of next year. There are lots of renders of Galaxy S11 already too, with a lot of focus on those cameras. Um, we're looking at a potential five camera setup on the back of Galaxy S11, but not just that. We could also see the high refresh rate, 120 Hertz AMOLED display could have a bigger 5,000 milliamp hour battery, the latest and greatest in silicon, that Snapdragon 865. I would agree with a lot of people that the Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus from this year were some of the biggest snubs of the year in the smartphone awards because they sort of fly under the radar coming out earlier in the year and the note comes out after it, but Galaxy S11 and S11 Plus are looking super good. And of course, S11e is also supposed to come out around that same time, probably on the same launch day, but we're looking forward to S11. And then one more smartphone, and you gotta see this coming. The iPhone, uh, I guess this will be 11S or 12, I never know what they're gonna call it, but the new iPhone, the 2020 iPhone, the flagship. Uh, and I've, it's funny, I've been on this train for a while. We're also expecting to see uh, an iPhone SE 2. Essentially, we're gonna see something like an iPhone 8 style body with upgraded internals, so that's of course less exciting, but that's also happening this year. But the new flagship iPhone has to have a lot going for it. And it turns out, because of what they've done with iPhone design, you can basically take everything I said last year about the iPhone and apply it this year, but with like twice as much confidence. The new iPhone. And a lot of this for me is specifically because of how much I like the new iPad Pro. So I'm not so secretly hoping that the new iPhone has that like really industrial boxy sort of design. I'm also hoping that maybe this is the first year that we get 120 Hertz display in the iPhone, just like we have in the iPad Pros. I am hoping that maybe we also get a USB type C port in the new iPhone. If they're willing to do it in the iPad, maybe they're willing to do it in the iPhone. I don't know. And then naturally we've come to expect high-end performance in iPhones. A lot of people don't know this, but the one terabyte iPad Pro has six gigs of RAM. Maybe we'll see a, a high-end terabyte iPhone 11 with a, the six gigs of, there's all these, these things that I see in the iPad Pro that I want in the iPhone. So yeah, so that, but 2020 iPhone. I, I really just want new design, high refresh rate, USB type C. The rest for me is kind of a bonus and I know their cameras are gonna be good again, but yeah, 2020 iPhone. Okay, 5G. Five. Uh, I passed on 5G last year as one of those tech things that I was looking forward to most as it was super early. And I actually have been impressed with how much 5G has progressed since then. And I don't think it's gonna be at the forefront again. I think there's gonna be a lot of 5G phones, but we actually got to test 5G this year with millimeter wave where we saw its strengths and we saw some of its weaknesses and shortcomings. And we got to see low and mid-band 5G, which had its own set of benefits. 5G isn't expected to be some instant thing. Of course, it's a multi-year rollout and each carrier has a different way of doing that multi-year rollout. But I think keeping an eye on those low to mid-band 5G rollouts is the most interesting part for most people. You'll still see the crazy tests of millimeter wave getting a thousand up and down, but keep an eye on that low to mid-band 5G. And then, okay, so camera stuff. I'm gonna take a page out of Dave 2 ds book here because I'm excited about the same thing that he also mentioned he's excited about in one of his videos. I'll link his video below. Um, but the RED Komodo system, it's a new body style for RED cameras. Some of you know I shoot on RED cameras and I don't talk about production stuff all that much, but their Komodo system is expected to be a much smaller, like softball sized camera, 6K sensor, new sensor entirely, uh, Canon RF mount, weather sealed. They've been teasing this thing for a couple of months and we're expecting to see it come out in early to mid 2020. And because of its size and expected versatility, I think for me, this is gonna be the car video camera. This is gonna be the travel camera for me over things like the Blackmagic Pocket 6K that I was considering getting that I'll probably wait on now. So the red Komodo camera system, it's pretty niche and I know not a lot of people care about that, but I am ready for it. And then to bring it all back to electric cars as kind of the most exciting new thing in tech for a lot of people. We got an electric Mustang this year, which was pretty sweet to see. And we got an electric Porsche. We got the Taycan actually coming out and shipping to people. I would love to do videos on both of those, by the way. But you can't talk about electric cars without at least mentioning Tesla. And what they seem to have in the works is a triple motor plaid drivetrain for Model S at the end of 2020. And then of course their semi truck is supposed to come out next year, or at least slowly start being manufactured if they can figure out manufacturing there. And then Tesla Model Y is expected to actually be ahead of schedule for production. And we should see the first Model Ys shipping to customers 
in early 2020. They've been spotted on roads for a couple of weeks now, which is always a good sign of them testing prototypes and things like that. So Model Y seems to be right around the corner. But then the Tesla Roadster 2020, is this famed quickest production car ever actually gonna come out when they promised it would, which is during the year 2020? No, there's no actual update on Tesla.com with any of this information, but just going from Elon tweets, which is kind of what we have to do at this point. And I think actually Franz at Tesla has also mentioned this on a podcast, but the Roadster seems to be delayed until at least after the Plaid triple motor Model S, which is the end of 2020. So that's probably a 2021 type of thing. And I'm a little bummed about it, yes, but I also never expect Tesla to be on time. So as long as they actually do deliver what they said they would, I'll be really excited. But yeah, Model Y seems to be actually ahead of schedule and ready to start hitting the streets in 2020. So there you have it. That's some tech I'm looking forward to and I'm really ready for in 2020. Some higher fresh rates here, some new Pixel 4a and new iPhone and Galaxy S11 here and there. Uh, I'm just, I'm ready to start this new decade on a high note. Hopefully January at CES is where we start to see some cool stuff. Either way, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next decade. Peace.